It's not incredibly uncommon to witness an interviewer and celebrity get into a bit of a misunderstanding during an interaction as unnatural as a red carpet or talk show. Sometimes these interactions can become a little bit heated due to the subject matter thrown at these celebrities in such a public setting. So today, we're going to be counting down the top 10 times celebrities clapped back at interviewers. At number 10 is Aziz Ansari. Highly acclaimed comedian Aziz Ansari, known best for his work on television shows such as Parks and Recreation and Master of None, as well as his stand-up special No Such Thing as Unskilled Labor, uses his platform for not only telling hilarious anecdotes and jokes, but also to advocate for better representation of minorities in the media. When Aziz made an appearance on The Late Show with host Stephen Colbert a few years ago, Colbert brought up Aziz's advocacy work during the interview, jokingly adding the fact that with the two of them on his late night show that quote, 50% of the people on the TV are not white. And Zari did not hesitate to shoot back that indeed such diversity was at a quote, all time high for CBS, which garnered much greater laughs than the previous joke by Colbert. It's always the jokes that ring the most specifically true that get the best reaction. The boys' discussion of representation on television didn't end there as they went on to joke about how a fact checking mistake that led to Stephen calling Aziz's book by the wrong name would likely lead to someone, most likely being a white guy, getting fired since Aziz joked, or more so was serious about the fact that the only people working for Colbert in fact checking were white guys. At number 9 is Lil Mix. After the girl group released their 2018 hit Strip, the subsequent music video that came along with the song featured the ladies a part of Lil Mix alongside other women of all different ethnicities and body types in very little clothing. This was in an effort to promote body positivity and self love. The creative choice sent shockwaves through the media and was for some reason not received incredibly well, which is strange since nudity and pop music go together like peanut butter and jelly. Little Mix appeared on Good Morning Britain not to promote the song and defend it from hatred it was receiving and not even physically, but because host Piers Morgan was not a fan and wanted to make it clear that he wasn't such. Piers went on to make a baseless claim that quote, if men did this they'd be arrested, which is ridiculous and makes no sense, going on to say that the nudity was just a ploy to get streams and sell their music, which of course, selling music is their job. When the Little Mix ladies heard the comments made by the host, now ex-member Jesse Nelson called him silly amongst some crude name calling, and Nelson's remark caused Morgan to respond with demands that the group apologize to him directly and immediately. While the group never ended up going on Good Morning Britain to apologize, they did go ahead and include the clip of Morgan's demands in an intro to a song during the Little Mix 5 tour. At number 8 is Hugh Grant. When Grant appeared at the 2023 Oscars, it was clear that it was just a work event for him. He didn't really care to get into the nitty gritty of his acting career with attending interviewers, but that didn't stop Ashley Graham from trying. Graham began the interaction on ABC's countdown to the Oscars red carpet with some pretty standard questions, and he decided to barely listen to her, hands on his hips and making no effort to hide the disdain he had for the night on his face. After grueling through some questions about if he was excited to be there and what he thought about other movies being talked about that night, and, and realizing that Grant was just not having it, Graham tried to ask him the easiest question she could think of, just a simple observational quip, saying quote, well, what are you wearing tonight? And Grant, continuing his disinterest, replied, just my suit. Ashley moved right past this after an awkward laugh, going on to inquire about his appearance in the 2022 murder mystery hit Glass Onion, to which Grant replied, well, I'm barely in it. I'm in it for about three seconds, and the entire exchange is actually quite funny. He's just in it for the check and to make a few monotone one-liners. At number seven is Tiffany Haddish. During the 2022 Vanity Fair Oscars after party, the girls' trip comedian was asked by the Entertainment Tonight reporter Lauren Zima about her, quote, costume change that took place over the course of the evening. Tiffany was quick to put Zima in her place, saying, quote, I'm not wearing a costume. I'm wearing Dolce & Gabbana. It's called an evening gown. No one's paying for this. I paid for it. It's custom. It seems that Tiff had had enough with people making any comment alluding to her wealth that night, because when Zima tried to ease the tension with a joke, laughing about her, quote, time of death, Haddish was not finished with her rant about the previous comment. Haddish continued by telling Lauren that the event was not an acting gig and was in fact her life, continuing by letting her know that what Zima was looking at was fame, success, and money. Later on in the night, Haddish went on to praise her friend Will Smith for slapping the host of the Oscars, Chris Rock, earlier that night after Rock publicly mocked Smith's wife and actor Jada Pinkett Smith. What a night. At number six is Hassan Minaj. Comedian best known for his talk show Patriot Act and stand-up special Homecoming made an appearance on The Ellen Show in 2019 and boy did Ellen mess up, just to be followed by some more intense mess ups in the following years, but I won't cover those here. While Ellen's fumble of Hassan's name doesn't hold a candle to John Travolta's Adele Dezeeming of Adina Menzel, it was still pretty ridiculous. He went ahead and called out Ellen on her show, telling her specifically how to go about pronouncing it, and she just decides to joke and say that she had done it properly, which was probably not the right move. But not only did Minaj call out Ellen, he also called out anyone who has ever mispronounced his name, saying it was hypocritical to say his name is hard to say while pronouncing the names of other celebrities with odd names with ease, such as, as Minaj says, Ansel Elgort. Minaj also 
joked that when ordering Starbucks, he goes by the pseudonym Timothy Chalamet to keep things simple for the baristas. At her halfway point is Anne Hathaway. Appearing on the Today Show to promote Les Mis, the interview took an odd turn as the later disgraced host Matt Lauer got weirdly invasive about her personal life. Lauer started the interview off in an extremely inappropriate fashion by saying that he'd seen, quote, a lot of her lately, which was in reference to an incident where a paparazzi took a photograph at an angle where you could see under Hathaway's dress. Obviously, not a moment you'd want brought up on live television, let alone breakfast television. Lauer went on to ask what she had, quote, learned from the incident, placing the blame not on the photographers who had invaded Hathaway's privacy, but instead on the actress herself. While Lauer continued to push the invasive line of questioning, Hathaway shut him down with incredible decency and grace, and has made sure to not be interviewed by Matt again. This interview became less shocking after finding out the allegations that Matt came under fire about back in 2022, and is in fact no longer even working for NBC. These people make it so obvious that they're awful people. And at our number 4 spot is Taylor Swift. Back in 2014, Taylor made an appearance on Today FM Sydney, an Australian news outlet, ahead of the release of her album that year, 1989. The interview was fairly standard, inquiring about how the album was made, what she wanted to achieve in her future career endeavors, what she fears, as well as her longtime friendship with Disney alum Selena Gomez. The interview took a turn when one of the reporters brought up the subject about how she always writes about her exes, and she responded quite pointedly by saying, quote, I think frankly that's a very sexist angle to take. No one says that about Ed Sheeran, and no one says that about Bruno Mars. I'm glad Taylor never took the criticism of writing too many love songs, because look at where she's been able to go with them now. And she's right, almost if not all musical artists have written a song or two about a lover. At number 3 is Zendaya. The former Shake It Up star was bombarded by strange comments after she appeared at the 2015 Academy Awards in a very cool outfit, but some took her style as an opportunity to be needlessly racist. On the E! News Fashion Police segment that usually provides a platform for fashion commentators to playfully discuss the stylistic choices some celebrities made during their red carpet appearances, the commentary went way too far when host Juliana Rancic said some disturbing things about Zendaya's look. Zendaya showed up to the Academy Awards red carpet wearing her hair styled in dreadlocks, and this choice was obviously not one that rubbed Juliana the right way, and she decided that it was appropriate to comment on how her hair must smell like patchouli oil. Not only did these comments spark outrage with viewers and on social media, but Zendaya took to Instagram to clap back at the host, stating that certain remarks cannot go unchecked, while calling the comments outrageously offensive and a large stereotype. I'm glad Zendaya decided to speak up about this, as well as how big a scandal it caused online, because it's aggressive remarks like that that make people uncomfortable simply expressing themselves and feeling safe doing so. Our runner-up is Jim Carrey. The Truman Show lead was anything but thrilled about attending the Harper's Bazaar Icons party in 2017. It seems like he just showed up to the event to tell everybody how meaningless the very event was, which is exactly what he said to the former E! News reporter Kat Sandler when asked about his attendance to the event. Jim replied by saying, quote, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing I could come to and join. And here I am. Afterwards, Sadler pressed him about the meaning of the word icon, among other topics, but Carey only continued on in an existential rant about the meaning of life. His top remarks include, I believe we're a field of energy dancing through itself and we don't matter. Oh, and he did all this while spinning around in a circle. I think more celebrities should start behaving this way. And our number one spot goes to Dakota Johnson, which will also make our second mention of Ellen on this list. Maybe she wasn't a great interviewer. She sure wasn't a great boss. A few years ago when Dakota appeared on The Ellen Show, things became tense quite quickly after Ellen questioned Johnson about allegedly not inviting her to her 30th birthday party that past week. Despite Ellen's protests, the actress insisted that she had indeed invited her and did so in a very graceful yet stern way. In fact, to add insult to injury, Johnson had actually never got a reason as to why Ellen didn't attend her birthday party. It wasn't until Ellen's producer stepped in and informed her that she had been invited that Ellen let Dakota win the argument, opting to just change the subject to Dakota's favorite comedian, which obviously was not Ellen. And that brings us to the end of our top 10 times celebrities clapped back at interviewers. Let us know if you forgot anyone notable in the comments below, and I'll see ya.